they're pushing boundaries and pushing boundaries can make you feel incredibly scared and incredibly kind of on edge. Um, And finding the confidence to be able to, to move forward towards your goals is really essential to be able to do anything because if you're not confident that you can even make a little bit of a change then uh, you can't you don't go anywhere because you're so fearful of what can happen and I wanted to discuss this as well because everybody's when we're having these uh, conversations around confidence uh, my friends often say to me, but Natasha, you have a lot of confidence because you go out and you do all of this. You get up on stage and you talk to people or you do this podcast and you put everything out there or, you, you know, you weren't afraid to launch your own business. Trust me, all of those things are incredibly terrifying. Terrifying. If I actually took a second to think about it, I'd be scared. If you came to the event last Monday, I was on stage, I was talking and I was, I picked up my water at one stage and I couldn't hold it because I was shaking so much. I was like, oh, come on, get it together. How often do you do these kind of talks where you have to be on stage in front of people? It's not, you know, but it's that adrenaline going through you. I can't control that. Um, And first and foremost as well. So I, confidence takes practice, but I also get imposter syndrome. Sometimes I walk into something and I think, what? How, how do you expect me to know about this? Like I'm a 29 year old who just quite frankly tries her best. And I talk myself down in my head when actually I know completely what's going on. So I get it. I, I absolutely get imposter syndrome as well. It's uh, it can be deliberating even, even to the extent sometimes where, um, I don't believe the stuff that I've, done. So if I think about what I've helped my clients with in the past, I think, really, was that you? You were there? Were you? And I have to write it down and be like, yes, you were. And I look back through my notes. And I'm like, yes, this is the advice that you've given. And this is the outcome that's happened. And I think our brain can take can play tricks on us. And I just want to say, I get it too. Imposter syndrome happens to me all the time. And I have to curb that because otherwise I will constantly play small. And, and just to let you know, I do play small until I catch myself. I think everybody does. It is a complete confidence thing because you think, if I put my head above the parapet here, oh my gosh, um, what are they going to say to me? What are they going to do to me? And uh, I've, I've had to rein that in and go, do you know what? Shout about how good you are because nobody else is going to do that for you until you show them that you're good. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, she's actually got a point. But what goes with that is the fact that I have to realize that not everybody is going to like me and that's okay. That's taken a lot of time because I'm, I like to please people. I would love to help everybody with everything at the price that they want to pay. And I'd love to give them like assurances that everything is going to be okay and I can move the world for them. And I just can't. I, I, I mean, I'm good, but I'm not that good. And so I also have to understand that every time I put myself out somewhere in a situation, not everybody who receives me is going to think, Natasha, okay, you're doing really well. Some people will take a huge offense at what I'm doing, regardless of whether I've got the best intentions and other people just won't like me. And that has got to be okay. So that is the first tip that I can give you on confidence. If you're looking to find some confidence, remember, you be you because you can't be anybody else. Don't start altering yourself for anybody else. But also remember that whatever situation you're going into, not everybody is going to like you and it's okay. It is okay. It's the way of the world. You don't get on with everybody. And to be quite frank, I don't mind not getting on with everybody because some people are awful. They really are. So just, just take it from there. To start off with, if you're feeling unconfident and you're worried about what other people think, turn up and be you. That's all you can do. Don't put anything on. Don't try and be somebody else. Just be you. And if the other person doesn't like you, that's on them. That's not you. 
nothing to do with you. It's not a reflection on you. As long as you've turned up and you're being the best that you possibly can be and your intentions are good, how other people receive that, it's just, it can't be you. It can't be you. That's just their, them internally. So then when you're thinking about finding confidence, sometimes it's a bit of fake it until you make it. And I am a huge advocate for this because there are times I go into situations and I think, hey, what on earth? And I'm naturally quite a shy person. You might not believe that, but I am. I, whenever I go into a situation, I have to listen first because I like to be on um, the... Res- I like to be knowing what's going on in a situation and I get shy because I'm nervous and I don't want to mess up what's coming out of my mouth and also when I get nervous in new situations I forget people's names I have a real bad habit for doing that you I could walk into a circle and shake everybody's hand and you tell me your name and then I forget it I'm a far better person one-on-one or one on a couple you know, one of one on a, one with a couple of people, so that I can get to know you and your name. So I'll have been around the circle, like fr- freaked myself out, forgotten people's name. Now I'll be feeling completely unconfident. I won't be focusing on what the conversation is. Instead, I'll be f- trying to remember what someone's name is, and that's it. Game over. So I've now had to start resetting the s- situation. It's okay if I don't remember someone's name because I can ask their name again. And I make a point of doing that. Um, If I'm speaking to someone, I just go, oh, I'm really sorry. Um, I didn't catch your name. And then they can, they give me their name. And I'm like, okay, remember that because I'm karma. I can do that. Um, And then I make a point of listening to what's actually going on in the situation and properly listening, not thinking about what I'm, what I'm going to say next or when I've got to say something. I think about actually, what's going on? Do I have anything to add? If I don't have anything to add, I don't say some anything. If I do have something to add, then I do say something. So I find my presence in the situation and listen. And that changes my confidence because now I'm on par with everybody else and I know what's going on. And then the next part is to stand in a situation like you are confident. Who cares what's going on in the inside if you can, on the outside, project this air of confidence? So that is standing up straight, shoulders back, looking directly at the person who's talking to you, or just acknowledging yourself in the room, being filling the room, filling the space, not like shrinking back, not crossed over hands like in front of you. If you all stood up straight and you're stood up tall and proud, you look confident. You're giving off this air of confidence. And from that place, then you can start speaking. You can really be a present in that situation. I find that helps my confidence. But that's a bit of a fake it until you make it thing as well, which you you kind of got to do in some situations. I have to do it all of the time. And then it's also about being brave. And I'll go back to the point that happened that I said at first, where sometimes you've just got to put yourself into a situation and being brave is all about taking that first step and it gets easier the longer you're in a situation to be brave so you've just got to make that first entrance and then from there just keep going and I always think to myself I'm always like if I'm going to say a networking event or if I'm going to speak to a new person or I'm getting on a phone call with someone that I don't know I always do this thing in my mind where say the event's going to last an hour I'm like say it's quarter say it's going to happen at six and it finishes at seven and it's quarter to six now I say to myself by quarter past seven I will be out of here and in the coffee shop having a having a cup of coffee and a red velvet cake so I give myself something to look forward to afterwards and I think at that point I'll be feeling really really relieved so do you know what grab hold of that that feeling that's going to happen in an hour and a half and use it now to propel me into the situation that I'm going to. And that is also a really good tip for finding confidence. And finally, I have a tip 
for you. And this is this is something which requires you to actually do something. And I find this really, really, really useful. And I was talking to one of my friends about this when she's looking for a new job over the last couple of days. So pen and paper at the ready, because you're going to want to write this down and then give this activity a go. Trust me, it works. So stick a picture of yourself on a blank piece of A3 paper. And then draw a line through the middle, not through your face or anything, but just <laughs> through the middle. And then on one side, write down everything you are, absolutely everything you are, your morals, your beliefs, what you enjoy doing, where you've come from, everything, just everything that's significant to you. You might like red colour or you might like a green colour or you might like ice cream, you know, whatever it is that's really important to you, write that down on one side of paper because that's you. And then on the other side of the paper, write down everything you want in life. Everything. You know, what are you looking for? What are you going to do in the next five years? How much would you like to earn? You know, everything. Everything that you're looking for. And then make those wants, what you're looking for, your non-negotiables. This is your non-negotiable in life. That's what you're aiming for. Every time you go into a situation, you then look at it and you think okay, how does this match up with my non-negotiables? Is it getting me towards that place? If it's not, then you can go, okay, that's cool. This is not for me right now. But if it gets you closer, you can go, "Mm mm-hmm, this is what I want. And only ever compromise if it feels good in your gut. So if you've got a good gut feel and you're like, "Mm, it doesn't really uh, align with my non-negotiables, but you know what? I really like it then fabulous, make the compromise. But having that massive A4 piece, A3 piece of paper in front of you with all of that written down gives you the ability to actually know who you are, what you want, and go into a situation with confidence, knowing that you can actually uh, bring that towards you, your non-negotiables towards you. And I think that for me, having things on paper is something that oh my gosh, I absolutely need. I'm a very visual person with the things that I want and I'm trying to achieve. So if I can write it down, um, I'll always carry a notebook or uh, and a pen or I'll be writing on my notes on my iPhone. That's what I do to give myself that pep talk to make sure that I'm doing things that align with what I want to do. And it also reminds me of things. It reminds me to go out there and have the confidence to get what I want. And it's hard. It takes practice. But these are some really good tips, feeling confident in situations. And once you feel that confidence, you can go out there and do exactly what you need to do to get you closer to those goals.